Language is power. Charisma is power. And James Baldwin had both of these in spades, if you'll excuse a politically incorrect pun. We were living in Big Sur, and my husband was in the English department at uh, the college in Monterey. We had each of us, in the early part of the 50s, become great fans of James Baldwin as a writer. We loved a story of his called Sonny's Blues, which was in the Partisan Review. Many of his other stories. We'd been following him for a long time. This is before the article, The Fire Next Time, appeared in The New Yorker. So he was not all that well known, generally. My husband engaged him to come to uh, the college for a two-week workshop, and during which time he lived with us. It was an incredible experience. I don't think I've ever been around anyone of such power. He made you uh, him. I don't know how to say this. Did you ever have an experience with someone that uh, was so powerful? It could even be a character in a movie that when you came out of the movie, every word you uttered, it felt like you were that other person uttering these words. It was weeks after he left before I was speaking with my my voice and my face, my my familiar being. I was another person. I was I was he. It's very strange, and of course the fact that everything he said was eloquence. You cannot believe. He had been a uh, preacher from age six or something like that. His father was a preacher. So he had that gift. He could turn a cadence. He could sing a melody that would just uh, make your spine tingle. It was amazing. So being around him for that long, I'm sorry, I just don't have any specific stories to tell. Well, there is one, but it's, it's not so much about him. Um, my children were very small. Well, I had a newborn baby, and um, then my daughter was three. Somebody had given her a copy of um, Little Black Sambo, the little, the little book with the, the familiar pictures. Of course, as soon as I found out that he was coming to stay with us, I stashed that. I just wanted it. We were living in a time where that was just not the thing to have around, right? So I uh, stashed it in the bottom of a closet. One afternoon we were sitting, just relaxed, having a nice afternoon, when my daughter came in and presented the Little Black Sambo book. I was mortified. She climbed up on his lap and said she wanted to play Little Black Sambo. Oh, God. Yes, she wanted to play Little Black Sambo. And he was going to be the tiger. See, kids don't have it. They learn it. After he left, we kept in touch for a few years, but you know, life goes on.